In this film, we are going to be looking at the whole issue of working together and cooperatives. And we're going to go outside the horticultural sector and look at a group of people who have come together to sell arts and crafts. They face many of the same challenges. They are relatively few producers scattered over a large area. and They have huge challenges in terms of cooperation and logistics. But we're going to see what we can learn from this business here and how it can be applied to horticultural businesses in Wales. My name is Angela Hawkins. I'm one of the founder members of the group Valley Arts and Crafts and we cover the old county of Montgomeryshire. We formed in 2005 and at the moment we have 76 members, really because of foot and mouth, where a lot of us are on small holdings and farms and we were very isolated and we lost a lot of our um, clientele because we couldn't get out to take things to them. Once we uh, got going uh, with the, after the foot and mouth, we were doing these sales in the village halls. And then this unit here at Lake Vernwy came up. The lease is actually in my name because they had to have one named person. We have wood turners, cards, knitters, we have a coppersmith and we have many painters. We have photographers looking around. Corn dollies, the old craft of corn dollies is still alive in Montgomeryshire. We um, communicate where we can through email. Um, a lot of members don't have email or computers because of the lack of broadband in this area. And in that case, we either um, contact them by post or by telephone. Um, we have meetings which we hold about once every six weeks to report on how the group is as a whole and how the shop is performing. We discuss upcoming events that members might be interested in going to. We discuss putting on events ourselves and basically pass ideas between each other um, and send all that information out. Members are responsible for bringing in their own work into the shop to keep it stocked. I generally take an overview of what is in the shop, but a lot of the other cooperative members, if they see that certain goods are selling well and we're low on stock, will contact that particular craftsperson and ask them to bring more work in. It has to meet certain standards which we as a group um, decide. Members tend to be very good and they know what other people who are working in their area are doing and they tend wherever possible to try and not replicate what somebody else is doing. All the positions held are voluntary. People don't get paid for doing what they do, they do it for the love of the group. Hello, I'm Marge Uden and I make uh, Rue Valley Bears, they're collectible teddy bears. I started in about 2005 and I needed to find somewhere where I could sell them. And I thought, well, how do I go about getting liability insurance? And I phoned up one girl I knew and she said, try Valley Arts and Craft. And that's how I got in with Valley Arts and Craft and uh, never looked back. They join us for several different reasons, partly because they want to be part of a group. Some of them join us because um, they want to partake of our insurance other people because they'd like to know about other events that are going on. Within the group we have members who have quite a lot of skills. We have somebody who is able to maintain the website. Uh, she works um, as a graphic designer. Our past chairman is a skilled carpenter so he's been able to come into the shop and put up the shelves and put up um, uh, equipment to display our goods. Well, our artists are very good with uh, ordinary paintbrushes to paint walls and rollers. <laughs> Just tell us, Angela, how you manage the, the finance and, uh, and distribute the money and, the, and the, the proceeds from the sales among the members. Mm. Well, what we do, the eight people who have a share in the, uh, the co-op in the shop, they put money up front at the beginning of a year and that money covers the rent, rates, uh, electric, 
telephone, the dreaded card machine which is so expensive but we all need these days, the commissions that we take from our members, there's a commission on their items, that then has been put to one side and we get a payback for the co-op members. The finances on a monthly basis are worked out from sales. The till is computerised and it is programmed with everybody has a code, usually their initials. At the end of each month, with a little magic turn of the key, I can print out a reel which gives me everybody's initials and how much they have sold that month. Well, we've heard a bit from uh, Valley Arts and Crafts. What I want to do now is draw some comparisons with a group of growers um, called the Clutter Organic Producers Group, who we filmed as part of this case study and look at where some of the similarities and where some of the differences lie. Um, now, I think the th what has stood out to me is the similarities as much as the differences. Um, both groups face similar problems. They are small producers scattered over a large area um, and they've got all the inherent problems of communication and, and logistics. Um, but what is also striking is both groups have identified very similar benefits. They both said that the opportunity to increase the range of produce or crafts on offer was very, very important. Um, they both highlighted how having different skills within the group is very important to, um, to, to make the running of the group cost efficient uh, and they both said how important it is to be able to share costs and labour costs across the whole group so we're not reliant on a single person. Also some of the challenges I think were, 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 were very similar, um, particularly the reliance on a very small number of, of very dedicated people and I think one of the key lessons out of this is for a successful group there's got to be a spreading of responsibility and that group has to be robust uh, and, uh, and resilient to, to, uh, to change and not, and not just relying on a few uh, particularly committed individuals. There were probably two areas I think um, that horticultural producers can learn uh, from from uh, groups like um, Valley Arts and Craft. The first is um, the importance that the, the, the craft group placed on, on the internet. Now, most of the, inter most of the UK population are now using internet um, to, to, to get information, uh, and it's certainly my experience that many horticultural businesses have been quite slow to pick up on this. Um, the use of social media like Facebook and Twitter um, has really developed and businesses are really exploiting um, those social medias to, to, um, to, sell, to, to sell their product. The second area is one that I didn't feel came across very well on the film and that is the opportunity to use skills and expertise within the group to generate income streams other than by just by selling produce. The crafts group we're running workshops um, which people paid to attend and I think with the increase in homegrown vegetable pro produce there's a real opportunity for growers to organise gardening courses or, or, or growing workshops. There's also an opportunity there I think to uh, for example produce transplants in spring as well as produce in the summer. <laughs>